As you can see, this time I'm not under any spectacular sky, but rather on the rooftop of the building where I live, beneath a light polluted sky, Bortel 7. And in this astrophotography session, we're going to test the SV Bonnie SV260 filter, which is equivalent to the well-known Optolong L Pro, but much cheaper. A filter that promises to let you capture almost any astronomical object from heavily light polluted skies. My name is Luis Miguel Azorín, and I welcome you once again to Natural Portrait. We've already talked about and tested these on the channel before, dual narrowband filters, which have become very popular because they allow you to combat light pollution quite effectively. For example, this is the case with the SV Boni SV220 filter, which allows seven nanometers to pass through in oxygen three and hydrogen alpha. However, this type of filter has a drawback. It is only suitable for photographing emission nebulae. It's true that there are plenty of emission nebulae in the universe, but not everything we can photograph in astrophotography are emission nebulae. That's why companies have continued working on the development of new filters, like this one I have here. These are wide multiband filters that are specially designed to block those bands where artificial lights emit. But at the same time, they allow the greatest number of light bands to pass through in those regions where we can photograph the universe. In this case, with this filter, we have two very wide bands in the oxygen-3 and hydrogen-alpha regions, areas where the universe shines the brightest. But at the same time, it also lets through three narrower bands in other regions where the universe doesn't shine as much. But we can still capture information from them. In this way, this filter aims to be quite efficient in combating light pollution. But at the same time, allowing our sensor to capture as much information from the universe as possible. So with that said, I'm going to set it up and we'll start the astrophotography session All right then, the equipment is aligned and ready to start the astrophotography session. As you can see, the equipment chosen for this session consists of the ZWAM5 mount, my main mount when I go outdoors to do astrophotography, and in this case, the main tube I've chosen is the SV Boni SV503 with a 102 mm aperture and a 700 mm focal length. In this case, I have it set to its native focal length since I've attached a 1x flattener without any kind of reduction. So we're working with the camera, ZWOAC 294 megacoulombs Pro, a camera with a micro four thirds sensor and a native focal length of 700 mm. By the way, I'd like to mention that SVB on I has just released the new version of this tube, available in apertures of 70 mm, 80 mm, and in this case, 102 mm. This new version features improved optics with much better corrected chromatic aberration, the object I want to photograph in this session is the M20 nebula. The three feet nebula, a nebula located very close to the galactic center, and from this latitude it passes very close to the horizon, which makes it a double challenge. We're dealing with a sky that is heavily light polluted and an object that sits very low on the horizon. So let's point the equipment over there and see what this filter can do. Well, here we have the first light from this SV Boni SV260 filter, and I have to say it's amazing. Here we have the Trifid Nebula. We can clearly see the redder region of hydrogen alpha and this bluish area, which is a reflection nebula. Well, we can also see that there are quite a few dust spots on the sensor. I'm not sure if it's on the sensor or on the filter, it looks like it's on the sensor, but I have to say I find it amazing to be able to get this signal from this nebula under these conditions. And if you look, the telescope is pointing really, really low. This object is extremely low above the horizon, and on top of that, we're surrounded by a lot of light pollution. So I have to say it's amazing to get this signal from this object. Well, now that we've done this first test capture, I'm going to set up a sequence and we'll try to capture at least two hours of integration on this object. Let's do it.
Well, the sky has finally clouded over, so the session is over. I managed to capture a little less than two hours of integration. I would have liked to capture more time. I was thinking about three hours, but well, that's how this hobby is. Even so, I'm pretty sure that those almost two hours of integration will give us a really good image. Now I'll stay here capturing flats and other calibration frames, but I'll leave you with the results.